All right, folks, so pay no attention to my green screen and all the other stuff I got going around. If you see some shimmering and all that, that's what it is. It's my green screen. It's like 15 feet behind me. But that ain't what we're here to talk about, folks. What we're here to talk about is D-Wade going to the Bulls. This is a move that I really don't understand, and I'm going to tell you why. Because at the end of the season, the Bulls had four out of five positions locked down and I mean, and it looked like they were good and poised to do something good for the future. So, you know, you had Derrick Rose at the point guard. You had Jimmy Butler at the two. You had Mike Dunleavy at the three, which that that really was up in the air. Mike Dunleavy, Dun, Doug McDermott, whoever you want to put there. Uh, then you also had, at the four, you had Pau Gasol. And at the five, you had Joakim Noah. Now, right now, that's a roster that's pretty set. You got some good pieces coming off the bench. Like I said, McDermott. And you got uh, Miritich coming off the bench. Good pieces, uh, and uh, who who else? I, I can never think of the ball head. Uh, Gibson, you got Taj Gibson coming off the bench too. Some good pieces there, cool. But then at the end of the at the end of the season, you trade Derrick Rose for Jose Calderon, pretty much, um, and uh, and um, and and little Harvey Grant, uh, Harvey Grant Jr., whatever his name is. You trade for those guys. So at this point in time. Fans are thinking, okay, are we tanking? Or, you know, what are we doing? Then you don't resign Joakim Noah and you don't resign Pau Gasol. Boom, those two guys are gone. So now the only thing that's really left is Jimmy Butler. So now if you're a Bulls fan, you're thinking, okay, we in full-fledged tank mode. We're going to tank. We're going to get a top-10 pick next year. And then, you know, we'll be right back in the, right back in the thick of things, you know, maybe sign another, a free agent or two next year. Boom, everything will be back to, back to normal. We'll be good to go. And then... They go and inexplicably sign Rajon Rondo. Now, Rajon Rondo, I kind of get that because you just want to have some stability at the point guard. You don't want it to be looking super sloppy out there. But Rajon Rondo and Jimmy Butler aren't two pieces that I feel like can get you to the playoffs. You might win 35, 40 games with them, but you're not going to get to the playoffs with those guys. But so, so now it's like the tank is still on because they can still get rid of Jimmy Butler at any time, right? But the tank is still on, but at the same time, you're not going to do too well, but you're not just throwing a garbage team out there so your fans still have something to get behind. Cool, I'm with that. But then today, they go and sign Dwayne Wade. This is a man, maybe not at his old age, but let's just say he gets pissed off and he decides he wants to play and his knees are willing this year. D-Wade can damn near get you to the playoffs by himself. Now, they still really are looking shaky at the four and the five. And uh, if Dunleavy leaves, leave, they're going to be looking shaky at the three. But still, with Rondo, Jimmy Butler, and, and D-Wade, I can't even think that this team is even thinking about tanking. Now, they still have to make some moves to make the salary work. But, I mean, maybe they're going to get rid of Jimmy Butler to make the salary work. I mean, obviously, they're already talking about getting rid of uh, Jose Calderon. But... Assuming that they can make the salary work, what is Chicago doing? A week ago, I was thinking that they were going to tank and everything was going to be good to go there and get a top 10 pick and they'll be right back in the thick of things, you know, in a couple of years. But now you signed Dwayne Wade for two years, $47 million, and that's what the deal is going to be should it go through. You got Rondo there and you got Jimmy Buckets there. If all three of those pieces are there, I feel confident that they are going to make the playoffs. I mean, D-Wade damn near made it in, in, in Miami by himself this year. Now, he did have some help. You know, you got Lou Aldang. You got a stud in, uh, in, in uh, Whiteside. But still, D in this weak-ass East, this team is capable of not only making the playoffs, but they making get out of the first round. So, Chicago, what the fuck are you doing? I don't get it. Do you want to tank? Do you want to rebuild for the future? Or have you – or did you – Start the tank, and then you just you just kind of kind of bitched up and bitched out and just said, you know what? The fans we hear a lot of backlash from the fans. Maybe we don't want to go through with this. When you tank, you do like Philadelphia does. You sell off everything you have. And what anybody else says, be damn, and you just go for the gusto and get first round pick after first round pick at the top pick. That's what you do when you tank. And then this year. Philadelphia should be a formidable team. I still don't think they're going to make the playoffs, but they should be formidable. When you tank, you commit to the tank. You don't say, okay, halfway through. Like, look at the Braves. You commit to the tank. You don't bring anything in here. You sell off everything. Even the homegrown guy in Jason Hayward. Leave Cameron Hayward there. I mean, Cameron uh, Maven there just long enough for people to think, okay, well, at least we can build around him. 
And then you set his ass off too. That's what y'all should have done here. You should have had everything brought Rondo in to settle the fan base down and then sold Jimmy Bucket's ass off. And then you could have just done a complete tank. And uh and and and, and then, you know, in, in a couple of years you'd have been right back. But right now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go out there, you're gonna win by 35, 45 games this year. Possibly make the playoffs. And when you make the playoffs for these next two years, you're going to get a garbage pick. And then after that, D-Wade is going to leave. Rondo going to be gone. Jimmy Buckets might opt out next year. I don't, I don't know what his contract is. I can't say that. But he may opt out. So what are you going to be left with? That's why I'm saying I don't understand this. I don't understand this move. Like, these guys get paid a lot more than I do. These are the people that drafted Michael Jordan for goodness sake. So, hey, you know, they got to know something. But I have no clue what you're doing. Not only signing D-Wade, but signing him to a two-year, $47 million contract. Gave him all the money that he want. At least, they, like, like somebody said, maybe they wanted a Chicago guy to come home and, and, and lead the franchise or whatever, you know, trade one Chicago kid for another. But, dude, I... I don't know. I'm st I'm dumbfounded at this move. Like I saw what you were doing when you let go of Powell, Joakim Noah, uh, traded D Rose, and then you were only really left with Jimmy Butler. But right now you've got three stars on the team who are capable of taking you. This this team is actually capable of going to the playoffs if they get if they get anything that resembles a five, which they may already have. But who knows? I, I, I can't tell you who they drafted, but, I mean, they might already have a five. If they get anything that resembles a five, this team can actually go to the playoffs in this weak-ass East and probably can get out of the first round. Now you're back to square one, and like I said, in two years, what are you going to do? d is going to retire. Those knees may not hold up the whole season. The only thing I could think of was, hey, maybe they're going to trade Jimmy Butler anyway and so that the fan base won't react so violently. They'll still just have uh, D-Wade. But even then, D-Wade and Rondo – with anybody else in this East, if D-Wade is able to play, he's capable of taking you to the playoffs or winning enough games to keep you out of the lottery. So I still don't know what you're doing. And where is Jimmy Butler going to play? I don't even know where he's going to play. Is he going to play uh, two? Is he going to play the three? Are they going to bring him off the bench? What are you going to do? Like, I just don't know. I'm so dumbfounded with this team right now that I, I can't even – express it or put it in the words, man. But anyway, I got to get up out of here. I just wanted to get this video up. You guys let me know what you guys think. I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know why they did it. I understood it from the tanking standpoint, but right here, like this is like a pseudo rebuild or a half-ass tank. Like you guys just didn't want to commit to the tank, but there's nothing worse than flip-flopping or or a half-hearted commit, commitment. I mean, it, 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 it I, I don't know, man. You guys tell me what you think, but I'm out of here. Till next time. It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK of the People's Champ. Holla! And if y'all want me to talk about these garbage-ass hawks right here and what we did, I damn sure will. Just leave it down in the comments. And if I can get like 200 likes, you know, we'll do that. I'm out. Peace.